So in this video, we're gonna do a, a dynamics problem. So this is what it is. It should be very straightforward. So uh, a 600 kilogram dragster is traveling with a velocity of 125 meters per second. When the engine is shut off, this is very, this is this is a key phrase, and the braking parachute is deployed. This is also key. The idea of braking. If the air resistance imposed on the dragster is due to the parachute follows this equation, uh, it's dependent on velocity, and it's in newtons where V is in meters per second, determine the time required for the dragster to come to rest. So um, before we get started, what I like to do is define some constants. So, uh, so we can keep this equation or the final equation as abstract as possible. So at the very end, we just have to plug in numbers. So we don't have to deal with any arithmetic in the middle. So what we can do is define A as 6,000. We could define B as nine. I'm getting those constants in this equation. And we can define the initial velocity as 125 meters per second. And we can define the mass of the dragster as 600 kilograms. So now that we have that aside, uh, what we can actually start doing is defining the free body diagram of the dragster. So what we could say is that this is going to be the dragster, this box. And we can define the velocity going in this direction, V naught. And we can define our axes as follows, X and Y. And now we can actually draw the forces onto the free body diagram. Note that this velocity vector is not a force. This is just showing which way the dragster is initially moving. So we could say that since the engine is shut off, there is no force being applied in this direction due to the engine. Um, and that's because the engine is shut off. So you can think of it as a free falling object or a projectile. So it's just falling without any force acting upon it besides gravity. And in this sense, in this analogy, the gravity part would be the braking parachute. And the reason why this, this is underlined is because it's braking, meaning it goes in the opposite direction of movement. So therefore the force of drag is going in the opposite direction of movement, which is going in the positive x direction. So those are the only forces acting onto this object, and now we can actually solve this problem. So the next thing to do once, having, once you have all that is to actually write the force equation. So the sum of the forces in the x direction, and we're calling this way positive, we, we could say that it equals negative FD, and since this is a dynamics problem, we could set that equal to MA, since uh, it is deaccelerating. So uh, we could say that, and now that we have that, we could actually re rewrite A in terms of a differential equation. So we could say A is the, the derivative of velocity. So what we can do is move this around and plug in this equation up here and solve for the time required. So let's do that. So what we can say is that negative uh, A plus BV squared which is FD, is going to equal M dV dt. So what I want to do is move dt over here and this equation over here. So what we can do is actually uh, rewrite the equation like this. So we can say this is negative dt equals M uh, dV over A plus BV squared. And now we can take the integral of both sides. So if we do negative integral dt and m, move the constant outside of the integral of dv a plus bv squared. Now we have to determine the limits of integration. So what I'm gonna do is actually define when this equation starts mapping out the dragster. So I'm gonna say this point right here all the way to some point over here, this is going to be when t equals zero. And t equals zero is going to be defined right when the engine is shut off. So that means the only force acting on the object is gonna be Fd. So right when the engine is shut off, that is going to be t equals zero. And then over here is t, and that's going to be when the velocity is equal to zero. So that's what we're looking for, time t, capital T, time required for the dragster to come to rest. So that's how I'm gonna define this equation. So the total time is going to be from zero to t, and we're gonna define this as v naught all the way up to zero. Uh, 
So we're starting with some initial velocity right when the engine shuts off. It has some initial velocity V0. And then right when it hits time t, the velocity is going to equal 0. So now that we defined our limited integration, all we have to do is do the calculus. So from there, we could define this integral as negative t equals um, m v naught 0 dv dt or dv over a plus b v squared. So to solve this integral, all you have to do is recognize that you could do some trig to parameterize this function so you actually can solve it. So what you can do is draw a right triangle and recognize that you could use the Pythagorean theorem to actually get this length. So we're going to define the length of this triangle as a plus b v squared. And then what, what uh, values could the lengths of the triangle could be is going to be uh, the square root of a, because if you square it, you get just a. And then you're going to do the same thing over here. So what we're going to get is going to be v square root b. So if you do the Pythagorean theorem, this uh, triangle should hold true. So from there, we can actually define this angle as theta. And we could actually start defining some trig. So what we're going to do is define uh, secant. So secant is going to equal the square root of a plus b v squared over the square root of a. And then we're going to define tangent is going to be v over or v times b over a all square rooted. And now we could actually use these to plug into here and solve this uh, integral. So to plug in this equation, we have to find a plus v squared. So we can look at here and get a plus v squared by uh, moving this over and then squaring the whole thing. So what we get by using that equation is going to be a secant squared theta equals a plus b v squared, just like that. And then we have to get this differential dv in terms of d theta. So we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to v. So we're going to say uh, secant squared theta d theta dv is going to equal b over a all square rooted. So the derivative of v with respect to v is just this constant. So that's what we get here. And now we could actually plug in these values into this equation. Well, actually, we have to solve for dv. So that's simply dv equals um, a over b all square rooted secant squared theta d theta. Now, from there, we could actually plug into this equation. So I'm going to keep the... I'm going to get rid of the limits of integration so we don't have to uh, parameterize that as well. We'll plug in the values at the very end. So what we'll do is just plug in these values first. So we could get negative t equals m. The limits of integration we'll leave uh, alone for now. And then we'll plug in dv, which is going to be a over b secant squared theta d theta divided by a plus b v squared, which is what we defined over here, a secant squared theta d, or that's it. So now we can actually simplify this integral. So we get negative t equals m, uh, the square root of a over b d theta. And then that's simply going to be equal to m square root of a over b theta. And then we have to plug in values of theta. Uh, so we have to actually define theta. So if we define theta as, we can actually use this equation to, de to define theta. So we just have to take the arc tangent of this uh, value. So what we can do is say theta is going to be the arc tangent of v square root of b over a, just like that. So now we can rewrite the equation. Let me change the color to negative t equals m square root of a over b. And then we multiply by theta. So that's the tan inverse of v square root of b over a. And then we integrate this uh, from v naught to 0.
So if we plug in these values, we get negative t equals m square root of a over b times the tan inverse of zero minus the tan inverse of v naught times b over a, all square rooted. And that's what we have to evaluate. So if we notice this right here is actually zero, and everything else should be fine. So um, this negative will distribute to the beginning of this equation. So negative, negative will make this whole thing positive. So we can say t equals m uh, times the square root of a over b uh, times the tan inverse of v naught times the square root of b over a, just like that. Okay, I noticed I did a small mistake on this part. So if you go, if you if you look up here, let me see if I could see it. Uh, right about here, um, this a I forgot to bring out of this equation. So this is going to be m over a, and then this is going to be m over a, and this is going to be m over a, and then this is going to be m over a. So now that that's fixed, we can actually start plugging in some values. And then all that is going to equal, the total time for the dragster to come to rest is going to be 3.530 seconds. So that is the whole problem. So I'm gonna quickly review what we just did. So uh, the first thing we uh, did was actually define some constants so we could uh, plug in values at the very end uh, of, this, of solving this problem. And then from there we drew the free body diagram and we recognized that when the engine is shut off the only force acting on this dragster is going to be the force of drag which is defined right here. And then we also defined when this equation or this, uh, this force equation starts working so to speak. And we defined time equals zero right when the engine is shut off and we define the final time when the dragster is com completely at rest as t equals capital T. And then we defined our some of the forces in the x direction uh, equation. So we said negative fd which points in the opposite direction that we define positive as you can see right here. And we set that equal to m times a. And we recognize that a is actually a derivative of velocity with respect to time. So we use that differential to actually solve this problem. So we plugged in the value of fd. And then we defined our limits of integration as we stated before. And then we solved this complicated integral by using parameterization with trigonometry. If you don't, uh, the easier way to recognize this is actually know your trig uh, identities for calculus for integrals. So you can actually skip this whole process. But if you don't remember that, you can always use this a very basic method of using a right triangle and redefining this equation in terms of secant theta and tangent theta and the variable theta itself. And then we uh, use that to rewrite the equation so we actually could take the integral of it. And this comes pretty nicely because secant squared theta and secant squared theta are both in the numerator and denominator, so that cancels out. So we get a very simple integral with just a constant, and we can define that the total time is equal to this right here. And then we go back to the triangle and redefine theta in terms of v only. So we say theta is the tan inverse of v uh, times these constants. So that's what we get here. And then from there, we could rewrite our limits of integration, which is going to be v naught to um, zero, which is the velocity of is zero, or when the dragster is completely at rest. And then we plugged in some numbers. And at the very end, we plugged in the constants. And from there, we get t the total time for the dragster to come to rest right when the after the engine has shut off is going to be 3.530 seconds. So hopefully that helped you out and uh, keep studying dynamics. Hopefully uh, I helped you understand some methods of dynamics and solving some problems and I'll see you in the next video.